there and welcome to my tutorial on the 3D printers. So first things first, you're going to need to download the software for the 3D printer. We've got two types of software that we currently use which is Cura and MakerBot. So what you're going to need to do is go to a search engine and type in MakerBot. And then what you'll get is a bunch of options and you'll select MakerBot Desktop. Once you're there, you download it and once it's downloaded you install it. Uh, not much point in me showing you that but anyway once it's installed you'll load up the software which is this software and you'll come to this screen. What you'll need to do is actually sign in. Unfortunately they require you to sign in so if you don't have an account you'll have to create one. Essentially you just create your account and sign in and then the one advantage to doing that is that it saves all your previous hints, uh, prints in a history so that if you need to go back to one you can. So here's your software. Now what do you do? Well, you need to set it to your printer. So you'll go to devices and then you'll select the type of device and you'll pick your printer. In the case of our printers, they're replicated jewels. Both the FlashForge and the CTC printer, the black one and the grey one or rather the sort of yellowy brown one are ours and so they're the replicator jewel. This software is for those two printers. Cura is for the Ultimaker. So that's how you install this software. To use this software it's quite simple in fact. You simply click add file and you browse to your file. So in this case I'll go to this file and you just wait for it to load which can take a while depending on the complexity of it so what it's saying here is that the object is much smaller than you'd want for printing and you can see that because you basically can't see it so what you'll do is you'll click rescale and there you go you have now got your print but it's absolutely tiny so there's a few things you can do with that print you can click on this which is your scaling up and you can either manually change each axis or after clicking that simply clicking on the object you, and dragging can change its scale as well. So if I zoom out click on it and drag it you see it gets bigger and bigger and so you can do that and that works quite well and it's pretty easy to do. So then you've got your manual change and then you've got same as what I just did with the mouse you can change the scale by changing that percentage there. So you've then got your rotate which allows you to rotate the object which you do again by clicking and moving the mouse. Otherwise you can do it manually like so. And finally you've got your pan which allows you to move it around on the print bed. And this is to scale of your printer. Now if you want to not bother with the manual stuff you can just click on platform and you can just click lay flat and you can click maximum size and then it'll set it to those sizes. I mean at most you'll have to rotate the thing back so that it prints properly. Now the other thing to note when printing is printers don't like overhang. So for instance that chin you can see on the model is going to be a problem when it comes to printing. Whoop, zoomed in a bit too much there. <laughs> so what you can do in the software as well is if you're using a traditional mouse holding down the click wheel will allow you to pan just the same as using that button. Scrolling the click wheel allows you to zoom in and out, right clicking allows you to rotate and left clicking does these things. So anyway you can see that chin. That chin is not great. It won't print very well. So the reason for this is because it's at quite a steep angle and so what you'll have to do is actually change some settings in the software. So in this case, you'll go to settings and you'll go to supports and bridging, uh, which you'll do after switching from quick to custom. So supports and bridging and you'll just click support and make sure that's ticked. And once that's ticked, it'll produce support structures where it needs to. The other thing you need to make sure is ticked is raft and that's just to make sure the model stays on the print bed. So those are the basics. There's a few other things specific to our printers. That is, for instance, when printing with um, PLA, you want to print at about 240 degrees C. Uh, that's just because it allows you to print at quite a high speed. If you don't want high speed and you want high quality, then lower that temperature down um, to, I don't know, about 230 
and then you can go for a higher quality print but um, that's entirely up to you really um, aside from that just copy the settings you see so this is setting the temperatures for printing this is the the sort of uh, settings for all the various movement speeds just copy them in then your infill that you can change to whatever you want the higher the infill the more solid the object is but also the more filament it uses and considerably longer to print for instance if I set this to 10% an object could take one hour and if I set that to 40% that object could take longer than even 40 than four hours um, the other thing you have is your layer height so that's to do with the quality of your print so if you want to go more in depth instead of just clicking presets you can change this and this will change the quality of your object so the highest our printer will do is 0.1 and that would that is 0.1 of a millimeter for each layer that it prints and that could take a long time so let's say it would take I don't know four hours on 0.1 if you then set it to 0.4, it would take uh, probably about an hour. It literally does scale quite kind of linearly. So that's to do with the quality of your print. And the higher that setting is in 0.3, 0.4, the more lines you will notice on the print because they'll be larger. So those are the main things. Um, there's not much else to say other than once you've got all your settings correct, you click export print and what you need to do at this point is get the SD card out of your printer so on the FlashForge and the CTC printer the memory card is on the right hand side near the bottom and you just push it in and it clicks out and put that into your computer or whatever computer you're using then you'll select it from the computer so in this case I haven't got one in the computer at the moment so I'll just save it to where this is and essentially I'll just name it what I want first <laughs> and click save and you'll see it starts slicing this can take quite a long time especially on big objects so just hang on and we'll see in a mo what it comes up with Okay, so now we can see the slice. So this is what's actually going to print. And you'll notice all this support material, which is helping to keep the print in one piece. So you can zoom in using your scroll wheel. And one quite cool thing is you can actually remove the layers to see how it's going to print it layer by layer. So you'll see we can s slice through like a um, brain scan or something so yeah that's pretty cool um, but one thing you'll notice is the density is pretty low on this and so you wouldn't want to be putting any sort of torsional stress on this because it would probably snap in half so yeah that's that once you've done all this you click OK and there you go so we'll in the next video show you how to use Cura. Thank you for watching.